You know, I really hate to say it, but this might be the second episode in a row of And Just Like That, which feels a lot more like the Sex in the City of Yore trying to break through. Like a drowned pigeon surfacing through a layer of pond scum, but still. So why don't you like this video and subscribe before they take away my snark card? Only joking, there's still plenty wrong with it. Let's get into it. Since we seem to be doing the same year in the life approach as last season, this week is Halloween. Miranda is still trying and failing to have it all, with her family life rubbing up against the one she's trying to build with Che, but not in a way that either of them might enjoy. Finish him. Steve still hasn't moved out, so Che can't stay over, and staying at Che's place means a 5am commute back to Brooklyn. The reason for the early mornings is Miranda's increasingly desperate attempts to maintain a sense of normalcy for a deeply unappreciative Brady. This translates to pancakes and pumpkin carving, like he's a fourth grader who doesn't understand why mommy and daddy don't make sheep monsters together anymore. Miranda fills Naya in on her situation, saying, I'm exhausted and I look it. Agreed. She accepts Naya's offer of her spare room as a solution. So, going back to living like a college freshman. At which point, I wonder, is she going to wake up to the fact that her life is getting objectively crappier every week? Whatever that therapist has her on, I want some. Elsewhere, ABC are apparently very excited about Che's pilot, which is how we know they haven't watched it yet. To their surprise, but not mine, focus group testing reveals that Che is the least popular part of their own self-titled sitcom. The whole Che character was like a walking boomer joke that felt so fake to me. Ouch. As a result, it's cancelled faster than the Carry Diaries. Cancel. Che, newly christened as a failed sellout, proves that they have done some acting research by taking the news like their next role is in Downfall. This isn't a game, this is my life, this is my career, this is my identity. It took me 46 my years to figure out who I am and then a focus yeah, group went out to can destroy me. As utterly self-obsessed as anyone on this show ever is, Che decides to toxically lash out at Miranda's attempts to help and asks for space. Frankly, I'd cut my losses at this point. She'd get the same experience by drawing a face on an inflated rubber glove and listening to tapes of Tom Cruise screaming at film crews. I don't ever want to see it again! Ever! Charlotte and Harry host a Halloween fundraiser, which they attend dressed as the leads from the Americans, which is only there as a lead-in for Charlotte to come within striking distance of the fourth wall by proclaiming, This show is brilliant. Everyone's insane. Sure thing, Shaw. The Americans won 26 awards. Let's see how your show stacks up. This meta watch party is interrupted by Rock, who, in one of the laziest pieces of writing we've seen yet, was scouted at the skate park by a rep from Ralph Lauren. <laughs> Harry's the only one to pick up on the overt nonciness of the situation, whereas Mrs. Goldenblatt abruptly transforms into a dance mom at the first sniff of vicarious entry into the world of fashion. When Charlotte and Rock turn up to the photo shoot, Dina Lohan here can't help but blurt out that she used to be a mall model. It tracks, in all honesty, but we're sadly robbed of a flashback. I'd guess a swampier version of Tiffany's I Think We're Alone Now video. Not quite ready to let go of his Halloween persona, Harry rocks up in the world's least convincing wig to do an undercover expose on the photographers. He means well, but in the process, accidentally goes full method and winds up cosplaying a Chris Hansen interviewee. As it turns out, everything is actually above board, and all Rock's required to do is jump on a trampoline against a plain backdrop. Which just goes to show that the people calling the shots in this show haven't developed their understanding of any of their subject matter past the late 90s. This week in Who Gives a Shit News? 
Naya's manhunt at a hotel bar with Carrie and Seema leads to a one-night stand with, it must be said, the extremely camp-sounding Ian. My name's Ian. Regardless, he rocks her world and lends her a new positivity about divorcee life. And a spot in Bitsy's WhatsApp support group for variously self-aware hags. On the same night, Seema gets her end away with gin brand rep Edward, who has to pump his padge to get it going. Get it? Edward. Ed. E.D. Seema puts up with the B-plus rough and tumble, but gives him the heave-ho when he hypocritically takes issue with her use of a faff buzzer. Shoot for those stars, girl. And Anthony's gaydar malfunctions at Charlotte's Halloween party, short-circuited by the abs of a straight guy he thought he saw in the gym's sauna. And there I was, assuming that the only thing he got a close-up view of in there was the tiling. Carrie opens strong this week by responding when asked where best to meet single men. A Marvel movie? All right, bitch. Calm down. On her way to lunch, Carrie stops to chat on her phone in the middle of a bike lane, causing tech entrepreneur George to crash and break his wrist. A timely reminder that her perception of the world extends only as far as her outermost layer of clothing. Oh my god, I have, I have to go. I think I may have killed a man. Yells Carrie. You'd think she'd be able to tell the difference by now. In a move she's quick to clarify is about avoiding a lawsuit and not because she gives a rat's ass, Harry escorts George to the nearest urgent care, where she stands by as he struggles to pay for his treatment like she isn't sitting on a pile of cash that would make Mr. Monopoly prolapse. But she does offer to help him out in other ways. Yes, it is what you're thinking, but she also hoofs it over to his ostentatious tech bro loft with a care package. Why? Because she thought he was penniless and starving. Good tidings, everyone! Carrie's found the solution to poverty! Three types of soup and a loosely packed kebab. Carrie also offers to help him complete a big presentation he's working on, and in the process reveals that she can type 92 words per minute. Whereas I just discovered that I can do 99. It's not strictly relevant, I just had to know I was better. It's a short jump from there to two separate rounds of Afternoon Delight, both of which are interrupted by George's strung out business partner, Paul, who unironically uses the word bro. Right to jail, right away. She ditches George in his sparsely decorated Bond villain hideout because he's married to Paul already, and it's all a bit too tangled. Lady, last week you were shilling a book about your dead husband. You come with so much unexpected baggage that I'm surprised airlines don't try to check you before boarding. Last video's top comment came courtesy of Cryptic Charm, whose newsletter would be about how to enjoy London on the cheap. My top tip for enjoying London on a budget? Don't go. This video's question is, what would your Halloween costume be for Charlotte's fundraiser? Drop yours in the comments below, and with a bit of luck, the ookiest and spookiest will haunt us all next time. Either way, thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and remember, if you can't be good, be crusty.